Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Inside Golf. I'm Harry Donahue. We have a big show for you. We'll begin with the 114th edition of the Golf Association of Philadelphia Open Championship. It was a thriller. It went to extra holes. And we'll recap it for you. Rachel Riley of Valley Forge Tourism takes a short drive to a great Mexican restaurant in Fort Washington. Plus, Rachel looks at a junior PGA program right here at Bluestone Country Club in Bluebell, Pennsylvania. That and a lot more up next on Inside Golf. Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf. 54 courses, 300,000 yards. Check them out at montcogolf.com. Buy the first tee of Philadelphia. The first tee helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit thefirstteephiladelphia.org. By the Golf Association of Philadelphia, GAP, celebrating amateur golf since 1897. By Jersey Man Magazine, it's a Jersey way of life. And by Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street. By the Haverford Trust Company, quality is in our DNA. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf. Take time to thank your local PGA golf professional. When I got back from the golf war, I was afraid to leave my house for five years. Clearview Hope and Renee Powell saved my life. When I started Clearview Hope, I wanted to do all that I could to help our nation's women military veterans. Renee, with golf, you have empowered all of us, and we just cannot thank you enough. The best stories end in thanks. Share your story at thankspgapro.com. As long as there is fear, as long as there is curiosity, as long as there are undiscovered corners of the earth, and as long as there is willingness and desire, then you are capable of more. The BMW Championship is coming to Philadelphia September 2018. The top 70 PGA Tour players will be there. Will you? Welcome back to Inside Golf, joined by Marty Emino of the Golf Association of Philadelphia, which recently hosted its 114th Open, and it was a barn burner. It was, and after a few close calls in the Open Championship, Billy Stewart finally did it. Stewart, 34, a teaching professional at the Ace Club, won the 114th Open Championship recently at St. David's Golf Club in a four-hole aggregate playoff. He defeated Radley Run assistant professional Brett Melton and top amateur player Jeff Osberg of Huntington Valley. Thank you. I agree. Stewart totaled 14 strokes, Osberg 16, and Melton 18. All three players finished the 36 holes of regulation at five under par. I've been wanting to win this tournament for a long time, back to when I was an amateur at St. Joe's. I like the name of it, the Philadelphia Open. I mean. I've been knocking on the door. I mean, I love the tournament. I get, you know, I'm excited for it every year, and um, it just it felt great to get a couple putts to drop and to finally get my name on that trophy. It was a thrilling finish to one of the wildest opens in recent memory. In addition to Melton, Osberg, and Stewart, Applebrook pro Dave McNabb, Philmont assistant professional Dave Quinn, and St. David's club champion Steve Dressel held at least a share of the lead in the closing holes. McNabb, Quinn, and Dressel each had issues coming in. Quinn and Dressel with the putter, McNabb with his drive here on 18. In the playoff, Melton, Osberg, and Stewart each registered par on the first hole. Stewart showed soft hands with this delicate pitch on number one after hitting his approach shot long. Osberg and Melton just missed these lengthy birdie putts. On the second playoff hole, number four, Stewart took control. He hit a pitching wedge from 137 yards to 20 feet above the cup. Osberg, too, had a birdie look from 30 feet right of the hole. Melton found the front left greenside bunker with his approach. 
He saw his eventual par chance come up just short. Osberg's birdie attempt slid past the hole and he would tap in for par. It was now Stewart's turn and he capitalized on the situation. He walked this birdie putt straight in. On the short par five, 490 yard eighth, Stewart did it again. After finding the fairway bunker, he chipped out to 107 yards and knocked his 52 degree wedge to 10 feet. Osberg and Melton each reached the green in two shots. Osberg's eagle try to tie Stewart missed low. Melton too failed with his eagle putt. Stewart then fired another fist pump when his left to right 10 footer for birdie dropped. Stewart, who won the 2002 Philadelphia Amateur as an 18 year old, maintained a one shot lead with one hole to go. On number nine, a par three measuring 232 yards, Stewart, hitting first, knocked a three iron to the middle of the green. With the pressure squarely on Osberg, the hard swinging righty watched his four iron come up 10 yards short of the putting surface. Stewart two putted for par and the win. All the great club pros over time have gotten their name on the trophies. I won the Pennsylvania Open a couple years ago, which was, was great. So I wanted to get my name on this trophy forever. And you know, all, all the greats that come through the section, the guys that have actually played in the PJ Championship, you know, somewhere along the you know, along the road, you know, it's nice to get a win on something that you you know, a tournament like this. Osberg, 34, was in search of his second Open title. He won the 2016 crown in a playoff, ironically enough, over Chris Crawford. He has battled chronic back issues and most recently a cracked rib suffered three and a half weeks ago. I was happy to be able to play yesterday and today. Today I definitely felt a lot better than I did yesterday and kind of lasted through the whole round, whereas yesterday I started to you know, have some issues with my back towards the back nine, but today you know, I hit it great all day long. Um, had tons of opportunities and just left too many putts short to, to win it. Melton, 44, who moved to the area prior to last year, is the reigning Philadelphia section PGA Player of the Year. He moved to the Delaware Valley from Indiana, where he was a five-time Indiana PGA section POI. I played good, I mean, for two days, and I think I had two bogeys for two days, and, and uh, you know, anytime you play at Donald Ross, you only make a couple bogeys, you're, you're doing okay. I made a lot of putts, and, and uh, just came up one putt short, obviously, in the first 36. Stewart has finished in the top five the last five times he's played in the Open. That included a runner-up showing in 2013, in which Stewart fell to then-amateur Brandon Matthews in a playoff. You worked hard all day, and it, you feel good about yourself, and then, you know, when you're tired, you got to do the playoff. It's like, all right, we got another four holes to go, another hour of work, grinding out, you know, nerves over short putts, all that, all that fun stuff. So. It is what it is. I just took it one shot at a time, and um, that's golf. I just take it one shot at a time and, and hope for some good luck. Good luck? Maybe. Great plan by Billy the Kid? Definitely. For the Golf Association of Philadelphia, I'm Marty Emino. Thanks, Marty, and congratulations to Billy Stewart. You know, after a round of golf, maybe the best thing for you is a nice Mexican meal. Well, Rachel Riley of Valley Forge Tourism recently took a short drive to a great Mexican restaurant in Fort Washington. That's right, Harry. On today's short drive, we're going to show you how Cantina Feliz here in Fort Washington puts the focus not just on the food, but having an exceptional Mexican experience. You know, really everything we do is rooted in hospitality. When the guest walks through the front door or they're greeted by the host, you know, we want them to be happy and not have to lift a finger. You know, Feliz means happy and uh, you know, that's what we're going for when guests come in the restaurant, greeted by their servers, and see the amazing food or beverage presented in front of them. Yeah, what we do here at Cantina Feliz is really a modern take on Mexican food. It's, uh, you know, the food is rooted in tradition, um, you know, the Mexican style of cooking, but we use modern ingredients and modern cooking techniques to you know, really bring out the, the specialty of, of what we do. Inspired by the flavors of Mexico, modern techniques bring out those tastes for lunch, dinner, drinks, dessert, and even for kids. The drinks as well as <clears throat> along with the food is really rooted in freshness. We uh, squeeze 
lime juice in-house at Cantina Feliz and all our locations to make the margaritas. We use uh, you know, fresh fruit for uh, you know, purees to enhance the flavors of our, of our margaritas. Our signature margarita is really the uh, Santana margarita where we use 100% uh, agave, tequila, uh, salsa hornitos, reposado. Um, you know, it really gives it a distinguished flavor because it's an aged tequila. And then, uh, you know, I think our other signature margarita would be our three chili margarita. We use a blend of chilies to give it a little bit of heat, uh, which is certainly unique in that respect. The restaurant blends a vibrant setting with a passion for hospitality to help people see a whole new side of Mexican food. You know, we're just excited to be a part of the community and uh, we want them to feel like they just had a great experience relaxing with their friends and family and, uh, you know, really that they didn't have to lift a finger. We did all the work and really anticipated, you know, every need that they were looking for. And they can uh, find out about our other locations at FelizRestaurants.com. That's it for today's short drive. I'm Rachel Riley for the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board. And remember, you can always find out more about things to do right here in Montgomery County at valleyforge.org. Thanks, Rachel. And don't go away, Rachel, because you're coming right back. You're going to give us a look at a junior PGA program that was held right here at Bluestone Country. For the 809 starting time from Lafayette Hill, Pennsylvania, and Bush Shore. Everyone is looking for something. Consistency. Quality. Peace of mind. Found. The Haverford Trust Company. where golf is more than a game. Welcome back to Inside Golf. Rachel Riley now takes a look at a recent Philadelphia Section PGA event, a junior program event that was played at Bluestone Country Club. Thanks, Harry. This season, some of Montgomery County's most historic and top-ranked courses, including the Bluestone Country Club right here in Bluebell, are playing host to the Philadelphia Section PGA Junior Tour. The Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board and Destination Montgo Golf are proud to sponsor the event, which features more than 80 young golfers competing. And to tell us more about that, we talked to the Philadelphia Section PGA Tournament Director, Brian Schulte. The order of play today will be Carolyn, Abigail, and Anisha. We got a couple minutes. Good luck, girl. So, Brian, thanks so much for having us here today. Tell us about what's happening here at Bluestone Country Club right now. Well, first off, thank you for being here. I really appreciate you guys coming out and showing support of the Junior Tour. Um, today is a Philadelphia Section PGA Junior Tour event. Uh, we have kids here 18 years of age and younger um, from Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. And so how long has this Junior PGA Tour been happening? Uh, our inception has been since 1979. Um, but uh, over the years it's grown in size and stature every year. And why do you guys do this, you know, come out to these clubs and have, have these kids play? Well, I mean, it's for the growth of the game. Um, you can see the juniors behind us playing today, having a great round of golf, um, enjoying the weather, um, you know, advancing themselves in their, you know, career as far as high school and collegiate golf. So it's definitely a great growth of the game initiative. And it's, um, as you said, 18 and younger, um, but we have some pretty young kids here and all different skill levels. Talk about that. That is correct, yeah. Um, our program is 18 years of age and younger, and our youngest division here is 12 and under. So they could be, if able, you know, seven, eight, nine years old playing today. And we've had, we had a little bit of luck here on the course today. Why don't you talk about one, one of, on the whole 12? Yeah, so uh, a very rare feat by uh, Jerry Halfman, uh, who's in our boys 16, 18 division. Uh, had his first career hole one and actually in competition which even is even better um, he had a seven iron from 177 yards so really exciting event today 
definitely exciting for him, but definitely for the other kids too. And this isn't the only event happening in Montgomery County. There's like more than a dozen, I believe, right? So talk about that. Yeah, um, in Montgomery County, I, I don't know the number off the top of my head, but we have probably more than a dozen events on our calendar, uh, including dry chip and putt, um, junior league golf, our junior tour and section events. We encompass over 150 events in our calendar year. And so what happens at the end? This goes through till when and what happens then? Yeah, so this actually is one of our qualifying rounds for our Junior Tour Championship. Um, it's a season-long Player of the Year points race that we try to get our kids to compete for and qualify for, um, taking place at August 13th at Old York Road, right down the road from here. And these kids are coming not just from the region, I mean, they're beyond, too, around the tri-state area as well? Correct, yeah. I mean, our territory is eastern PA, southern New Jersey, and all of Delaware but we do allow players outside our section territory to play in our events. So we do have a player today playing from Florida and a few other states around. Brian, how can other kids get involved if they see this and want to participate in the Junior PGA? Uh, there's many avenues, but the best place to go to is our website, uh, phillyjuniortour.com. Uh, there's more information there to get us via our email and also our phone number too. Brian, I'm sure you're grateful and appreciative to all the courses here, especially in Montgomery County, that are hosting these tournaments. So anybody you want to thank? Oh, of course, uh, especially Bluestone Country Club today, uh, host professional Chris Gardner, and all of our other host facilities on our calendar this year. We couldn't do it without our facilities. All right, well, again, thanks so much for having us. Best of luck to all the players, and hopefully we'll see a local make it to the championship. Yeah, thank you for having us. Appreciate it, Rachel. To learn more about this tournament, check out phillyjuniortour.com. And of course, you can always learn more about all of Montgomery County's more than 50 golf courses at mongogolf.com. For the Valley Forge Tourism and Convention Board, I'm Rachel Riley. Thanks, Rachel. And remember to check out that website and get all the information you need on the Philly Sections Junior Program. All right, stay with us. More to come on Inside Golf. We're going to be teeing off with our teed off pack. Short courses, they say. Short courses are just an extra nine. Uh, we were talking about this a little while ago. Uh, uh, Huntington Valley has a, a third nine. Welcome back. Inside Golf now continues with Teed Off. And today we're going to tee off from Bluestone Country Club in Bluebell, Pennsylvania, where they still have their incentive membership program. Chance for you to get involved here at Bluestone. For more information, just go to their website, bluestonecc.com. Joining us today here on uh, the patio of the Country House at Bluestone is Lila Mackey. This is a short trip for you. Your offices aren't far away. Her office is with the Philadelphia section, PGA of America. Good yep, to see you again. Yep, two miles. Thank you. Joe Logan, he's always within uh, a short ride anywhere when it comes time to talk in golf. Joe has uh, myphillygolf.com. Covered golf for years with the Philadelphia Inquirer and a uh, big time contributor here to Inside Golf. Good to see you. Good to be here. Chris Gardner is the head professional right here. He's on home turf at home turf. Bluestone. Got the blue on. Everything looking good. Golf course looks beautiful too. Thank you very much. It? Yeah, yeah. They, they, they do a good job. Uh, it's in full bloom right now. Absolutely. I'm sure that cool, damp spring really helped get this place. The course is lush. Yeah. Pretty lush and deep. All right, let's talk about nine hole golf. Either a short course, Leela, or maybe people just with not a lot of time in their hands to play nine holes. I know it's sort of a push, maybe not a real heavy push, but uh, you hear more and more about it. Am I right? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, people are definitely embracing it more and it's kind of, you know, changed the concept of what people's. Um, definition of golf is it doesn't have to be the full 18 now and um, you know nine holes are certainly more popular I think than they have been before people are um, working more have less time to play or spend on the golf course or whatever but um, you know it's more fun when it's an easier shorter course so I think that's kind of where golf is going right uh, your experience here at Bluestone and with members um, everybody some people have still have to work for a living right and get out there maybe whenever they can squeeze in whether it's seven, five, or nine holes, whatever the case may be. Do you see more of that in your job as the head pro here? Yeah, I would guess that we do maybe 25% of our rounds are nine hole rounds. Really, that high? I would say it's that high. And it's, it's certainly a trend that probably will grow. You know, whether it's uh, junior golfers just playing a quick nine after school, or it would be beginners that only want to do nine holes, seniors that may only do want to do nine holes. 
um, it's two hours instead of four, you know, quite honestly. And there, there are obvious advantages to that. So um, like, like Leo said, I don't think it's a trend that's going any, anywhere anytime soon. And, um, you know, nine is better than nothing. Right. I mean, for years you've had uh, in, in private clubs like nine and dines and things like that for husband and wives. But now you're saying it's going beyond just those sure. uh, traditional nine hole experiences. Sure. If you get to the golf course at six o'clock at, you know, at night and you want to come here after work, uh, you can play till dark, you know, so you can still get in nine holes from six o'clock to eight o'clock and, and still get uh, some dinner before bed. Joe, uh, your experience with the way some courses are adding nine hole to their 18. Uh, just to have that available. Maybe not a full championship layout, but maybe just a, a par three nine hole, a short course as they say. Short courses are just an extra nine. Uh, we were talking about this a little while ago. Uh, uh, Huntington Valley has a, a third nine. Philadelphia Country Club has a third nine. The only nine hole course I really know of around here is Flowertown Country Club, which at one point was an 18 hole. Yeah, 309 came through there right. and they had to lose exactly. nine holes. I remember doing a story for Gap Magazine last year about uh, Merchantville Country Club, and they have uh, uh, holes across the road, and people sort of have created a nine-hole loop on this side of the road, uh, and they come in and after work, and there are all kinds of things like that. And I remember uh, Gil Hance made the case once that uh, more people were designing courses with sort of six holes out and back to the clubhouse, then six holes out and back to the clubhouse, you know, so three loops of six. Right, right. Uh, down the shore a lot uh, this time of year, Claremont is a nine hole course uh, right outside of Ocean City. So they do have a nine hole course and it's not a short course, it's a regular. And they have sets of tees, I believe, like you can play two sets of tees on each hole. So breaks it up a little bit maybe, you know, the angle, the distance, things like that. Uh, Leela, maybe you know, are there nine hole tournaments? Like uh, for juniors, I know you're involved with junior, junior golf a lot, or is that something you think that we'll be seeing something yeah, along I mean, those I lines? Yeah, I think that, you know, as far as junior golf goes, it's really kind of what juniors should be playing at that age if they're just starting out. You know, playing 18 holes as a junior that's a beginner, that's a grind, and it's not very much fun. Um, so we have a, obviously, our junior tour has our nine hole division, which is uh, for kids 12 and under, I believe. and. PGA Junior League, that's nine holes. So it's a developmental program and you're playing in a team format, but PGA Junior League is nine holes and that's all the way through the All-Stars and the championship. So that's would be a nine hole um, you know, competition. Right, so you pretty much say that it's not just something that's come along the last few years that eventually is gonna die out. You think it's not only gonna die out, it's gonna expand. I do, yeah, and, and like I said, it, it's, it's for the obvious reasons. It's, uh, it's time frame restraints, it's, um, and, and you can see trends, too, from some of the most iconic resorts in the country. If I'm not mistaken, I think Bannon Dunes, Pebble Beach, and Pinehurst all have nine-hole short I know short Pinehurst courses. just opened one. Uh, yes, they, they opened one in, in, as an intern at Pebble Beach. One of my shifts actually was to work the nine-hole short course at Pebble Beach, so the wow. Peter Hay course. And uh, it doesn't get a lot of play, but if, if you've just finished dinner and you want to just, obviously, the tea times are closed at Pebble Beach uh, proper, so you can go over there to the short, short course with family and get a quick nine in before dark. So. Right, and I know uh, Joe, uh, Pine Valley, Tom Fazio, did a nine hole course for them a few years ago. Uh, I wanna say it's, it's more than 10, right? And uh, uh, for a lot of people, it's a chance to go, they're flying into uh, the, the area to play Pine Valley, yeah. go the night before and play nine, and then wake up and play the 18 hole course the next it's day. It's part of the full Pine Valley experience. Is that what it is? Along with the snapper soup. <laughs> you know, play the, play What's the your favorite, the nine holes or the snapper? It's a tall sap. <laughs> I like sap. For, I, I love snapper soup. So, uh, All right. But it, it's a pretty nice nine-hole course over there. Oh, nothing but the best. Thanks for joining us, panel and viewers, and stay with us. We'll be back. More of Inside Golf in just a moment. Located in Bluebell, just a short drive from Plymouth Meeting, Bluestone Country Club offers a setting that's close at hand but feels like a world away. Bluestone offers a championship caliber golf course, practice facilities including a large driving range, separate chipping and putting areas, and a staff of PGA professionals. At the Country House at Bluestone, you'll find excellent food, superb service, and an outstanding setting. Their expert staff will assist in planning your next event, whether it's a wedding or simply a lunch and dinner or cocktail party. Check out Bluestone's variety of membership options. Much more than a golf course, Bluestone is a community.
Got a young golfer in the family? Whether their dream is to grab a national ranking or just have more fun on the golf course, sign them up for the Philly PGA Junior Tour this summer. It's competitive play on premier courses for boys and girls 18 and younger throughout Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. Perfect for gearing up for the next high school or collegiate golf season. Available to both new and competitive golfers. Registration now open year-round. Help your young golfers find or improve their game. Sign them up today at phillyjuniortour.com. That's going to do it for this week's edition of Inside Golf. Next week, we head to the Jersey Shore. We'll take a look at the new Shore Club. Actually, it's the old Wildwood Country Club. Has a new name, the Shore Club. New ownership, and they're doing a lot of new things down at the Shore Club. We'll take a look. And in the weeks ahead, we'll be making a stop in Chester County at French Creek. Remember, no matter how bad it's going for you out there, don't pick up. And we'll see you next week from the Jersey Shore and the Shore Club on Inside Golf. Inside Golf is presented by Destination Monco Golf. 54 courses, 300,000 yards. Check them out at MoncoGolf.com. Buy the first tee of Philadelphia. The first tee helps young men and women become better golfers, but most important, better people. Get involved. Visit TheFirstTeePhiladelphia.org. Buy the Golf Association of Philadelphia. Gap. Celebrating amateur golf since 1897. By Jersey Man Magazine, it's a Jersey way of life. And by Philly Man Magazine, bringing it to Broad Street. By the Haverford Trust Company, quality is in our DNA. And by Inside Golf's partner since 1998, the Philadelphia Section PGA, experts in the game and business of golf. Take time to thank your local PGA golf professionals.